The origin of buffalo wings is cryptic and disputed, but is generally credited to Teresa Bellissimo of Buffalo, New York's Anchor Bar sometime in the 1960s. In 1982, college friends Jim Disbro and Scott Lowry opened a restaurant based around these cayenne spiced wings, as well as a second regional New York State delicacy, the Beef on Weck Sandwich. The Weck didn't last, but the wings were a hit, and ever since CEO Sally Smith took over in 1996, the company has experienced record growth, expanding from 300 locations to over 1,000 in the past decade alone. In an age when many sit-down chains are struggling and contracting, this casual restaurant's trademarked three-pronged focus on wings, beer, sports has made it a mecca for bros. According to Bloomberg, customers at these restaurants consumed over 11 million wings this past Super Bowl Sunday alone. With over 20 spices and sauces, it has a laboratory of flavors to pair with the omnipresent ball games on its walls of big screen TVs. This week on Doughboys, we take on the place they call B Dubs Buffalo Wild Wings. Welcome to Doughboys, the podcast about chain restaurants. I'm Nick Weiger, alongside the Spoon Man, Mike Mitchell. How are you, Mitch? I'm doing well. Just want to give a shout out to Spoon Nation. Say a little. Uh... All right, <laughs> Mitch. Do you think there's any danger in the fact that you begin every podcast by giving a shout out to Spoon Nation? And is that something that's maybe alienating our new listeners? Like, are people t- tuning in, listening to an episode, oh, I've heard about Doughboys, what is this thing? And then immediately, we're calling you the Spoon Man, you're giving a shout-out to Spoon Nation, a big inside joke that new new people would have no idea what it is, and then uh, that's how we're starting things off. Well, you know, if you listen to an episode, I think you, you, you'll get the idea. You'll either find out if you're with Spoon Nation or not. But, gotcha. Uh, yeah. So it's kind of like a soap opera. You just sort of pick, uh, jump into the middle of it, and yeah. you, you run with it. It's not really a exclusive club. I, I mean, uh, there, there's ways to get in. We're going to explain that a little bit on a future episode. I don't think we, we need to. No, we will. <laughs> I, don't think we wanna, I don't think we need to hear the other rules of how you join Spoon Nation. No, we're going to. All right. Uh, you, Eugene Codero has been uh, named captain of Spoon Nation. So. Very funny man. Hopefully a future guest. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, for sure. We're going to go over the rules with you, little wire. All right. I'm... The burger boy. <laughs> Uh, Mitch, we have <clears throat> just come from eating. I would mm-hmm. say at this point I am, I have about, I, I, I woke up at 5.30 a.m. It's currently 10.30 p.m. That's right. And I have, ju- we've just eaten at our restaurant. I probably have about eight pounds of wing meat inside of me. <laughs> this is just like a very, I'm already feel like I'm swimming. I feel like I'm underwater from the get go. Yeah, but we got a lot to discuss today. So you got to get with it. It's, there's a lot of, of stuff going on. And also... Our guest is wearing such a cool shirt. It, it kind of uh, it lifted my spirits. <laughs> <laughs> it lifted my spirits, and I'm ready to go. <laughs> it's been a crazy day. I'm with you, but we're. I think we're gonna. I think it's gonna be. Things are gonna be good. Let's uh, let's jump right into it then. Okay. Um. Uh, uh. Let's say hello to our guest. He's over there wearing a free Brady T-shirt mm-hmm. alongside his New England P- Patriots uh, ball cap. Uh, he's an executive producer and writer for The Simpsons. Matt Selman is here. Hi, Matt. Hey, guys. Big fan. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> that's I can't I can't believe that ever. But that's very nice of you to say. Uh, I, we're, we're big fans of you, and you're my former boss, and I'm very happy to have you well, at the show. I consider us as comedy peers. The, oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> if not, you're like the new generation, and I'm fading into the gray dusk. Oh, that's not true. <laughs> Both of you. <laughs> I consider Nick kind of a gray dusk yeah. sort of guy. I'm sorry. I'm beginning. I'm starting my fade. Nick, I never really got anywhere. But Nick is so well spoken, though. I think he'll always work. Oh, thanks for saying that. Yeah, but like, there's a I lot think of NPR in your future. <laughs> I think that could be a fallback plan. I've got the dull cadence for an NPR Not personality. Dull. Like, no, I think you could do Marketplace if Kai sure. Rizdal <laughs> were ever hit by a truck <laughs> or committed suicide because of his business losses. You have like. A non-emotional voice, like yeah, a, like a John Wayne Gacy or something. Well, You're very similar. Well, you know when it, <laughs> like serial killer John Wayne Gacy, <laughs> yeah, who used clown makeup and lured children into his basement where he killed them. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. All right, fine. Um, yeah, it's a. Uh, a I, I feel like like when I feel like I'm emoting, and then I listen to myself late later. 
uh, either in the context of like a podcast or if any time I've had something that I I'm saying with air quotes like an acting job, I feel like mm-hmm. and I'm like I feel like oh I'm really I was really pushing it there, and then I listen to myself later, and it just it sounds like a robot talking. Like I just I my natural voice is like kind of at a very flat level, and I don't realize how unemotional I'm coming across as. Jack Allison and I always say that you sound like the Canadians from South Park. <laughs> All right. Hey, buddy. You always kind of talk like that. Like, yeah. How sure. you doing, buddy? You kind of to say your 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 voice. Kinda, but you told me earlier tonight that I thought I had gotten rid of my Boston accent, and you think that I sound like a a thick accent. Dummy. Oh much, yeah. Right? No, I think you sound like a Bowtown townie. You sound like yeah. a, a Quincy, the Quincy native that you are. Yeah. I guess you can't get rid of it. You can't run away from the past. Town of Kings. <laughs> Is that what they call it? Yeah. Right. It's the town of presidents. Oh right. Not yeah, kings. city of presidents. Yeah. No, we don't have kings. We have presidents. <laughs> Got that hundred percent wrong. I like town of kings though. I think you should adopt that. Why not? Yeah. We. we that would be uh, a great way to get, get it wrong. <laughs> Quint, a, a city of legends, maybe I think a lot of people call it. All right, Kings. I don't. Not saying that I I am a. Le- I'm saying just people call it that. Maybe they don't. Maybe that's just kind of like Quincy people with big heads call it that. But uh, but I, I've been listening to to the show for a while. Yeah, and I I feel like I'm really good friends with you guys, even though I've never met Nick before and I haven't seen Mitch in like a year or two. It could have been and a- before that, like three years. <laughs> It's like, but I was listening to you. I feel like I'm part of your inner circle of whatever, UCB, going to, drinking. Let us also I think quickly the say. class taken. Yeah, the term you're looking for is improv assholes. <laughs> Her- herald, learning, yeah. political doings. Well, if you think. Besser it, worshiping. I am a, Bess- a big Besser fan. Sure, why? Well, yeah. But, but I, I will world. say that if you're talking about going into the gray dusk. Uh, the, Nick and I have reached that in our UCB lives. <laughs> I think that if we're, we're not guys who are hanging outside of the theater smoking cigarettes. We're the old guys who come and do a show and then leave yeah. and go home. Or we're not even out at all. We just go home after work. Uh, um, right? We, yeah. You'd say that's accurate. Sorry, sorry to shit on both of us. But. No, I think that's pretty much it. I'm over it. Yeah. I'm over everything. I'm over this podcast by this point. We're 19 <laughs> episodes in. I'm pretty much done with it. <laughs> Ready to move on. Um, So, Matt, you've been at Simpsons since season nine, is that Mm -hmm. correct? And then so Mitch worked there as a writer's PA. So what was your guys' (laughs) dynamic at – like, like, what was that? What was going on there? What what was it like working with Mitch and uh, uh, how how did you guys interact with each other in the workplace? Well, I think it was thematically linked to this podcast, which is good in that his main job in terms of my – interaction with him was he would get lunch. Gotcha. A hundred percent. I mean, he had other <laughs> duties like script Xeroxing and table read prep yes. and, and other assorted nuttiness, but it really was like feed the fat, lazy, spoiled writers <laughs> was like the main part of your job, right? A hundred percent. That's that's one of the biggest things that you do. You Getting lunch for the writers every day and getting it on time because you, you're supposed to be ringing that lunch bell at 1 p.m. every day. We have a literal bell, that a cowbell cow will ring. Bell. And That's true. People come running in from the fields of <laughs> pitching. It's, to... it's, I don't even, at first I was like, is this demeaning to me or to the writers? I didn't even know. I was like, is it demeaning to anyone, either of us? And then at the end of it, I was like, this is normal life. Like it never, it, it works so well. Everybody hears it because it's huge. Very functional. It's very, very functional. And it's, it's, it's a big little – I mean, it's a big section that we're, that the Simpsons are placed yeah. on. And anyone who works at that show for the rest of their life, a cowbell makes them hungry. <laughs> <laughs> makes them salad, crassly, Pavlovian reaction. Selman, um, Selman was one of my – is definitely one of my favorite people over there and also the guy who will put me through the ringer the most, which I also loved. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It was a lot of fun and very crazy. Well, I thought, the, my favorite thing I would – I would make him do, and you know what I'm going to say. I know exactly what you're going to say. Is, you know, we'd buy the the natural peanut butter that was separated. Oh, yes, yeah. And it was like a brick of solid peanut butter with the fat layer at the top. Uh-huh. And I would make him, like, stir it and, like, till it was all perfectly mixed. I remember the first day he was like, I want you to stir the peanut butter. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I think I even called. I was like, oh, my God. Because uh, uh, you can also call someone on that. 
this is the part of the reason why I love him so much and and he he knows it's ridiculous but I I would I would sometimes do it but then you the funniest thing of all is you bought me uh <laughs> do you remember that you gave me yeah. as a gift sure a peanut butter stir <laughs> like you, you screw a special lid in and it stirs it <laughs> it was and, and I I don't think it ever worked well I think I just always try yeah, to do it work. by hand I mean, but the sad thing is I probably did it to be like uh, air quotes, dick. Yeah. Like, can you believe I'm asking anyone to do this? Although I really am, like, having yeah, fun yeah. with that in my mind, but not super caring if you did it. Mm-hmm. But now that I'm like a old producer jerk, I see I how, what there's actually like Mr. Miyagi style value for the new PAs in actually like doing a shitty sure. job and learning to do it right. And even though it it's kind of a puzzle and you figure it out, but like. If you oh. can if you can stir that peanut butter with excellence, you're on your road to doing anything. Like I'm teaching you how to produce, and you start at the beginning. You don't know you don't know that. For sure, for sure. This no. is the most disingenuous. No, no, I, no. I, 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 I actually, I, I. This is maybe this is like uh, what's it called uh, when the the captive uh, takes their Stockholm syndrome? Stockholm syndrome sort of deal. But I, honestly, I, I, I agree with you. I. I when I got there, you know, like there, like when I was like, oh man, some of this shit. And then I was like, you know, that's like, it is your job. It's my job to keep these writers happy and to get, get them their lunch, get them food to do a lot of this stuff. And it's a lot of people's dream job. So I kind of like thought about that too. Like I, I, w- I was there for too long, which is, which is tough. I was there for like three and a half years. I moved over to post after two and a half years. But two and a half years, almost three years. That's too long. At that at that one job is too long. And it was just kind of the time that I was there. That there was no opportunities for me really to, to go anywhere else. I was doing UCB stuff and stuff like that. But um but I it did prepare me a lot. I like uh I I, I it's it's it is stuck with me. Even today if I, when I'm in a room or something, or I'm working with the writer's Are we still assistant. talking about the peanut butter thing? No, 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 no. Just, just, okay. no. Just, <laughs> I was how long this was. This no. was this, I thought this was all related. <laughs> no, 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 I'm saying his his preparation for me as a PA. Like, I got gotcha. you. The, the overall stuff, experience. The overall experience. Like, I, I, I still take that with me. I, I expect people to do a good job. The, the other birthday boys would sometimes would be like, you care more about like that Simpsons job than like getting to birthday boys <laughs> meetings and stuff like that. But it was ingrained in me. Something did happen. It's, it's a weird thing. Well, what is what, I say? Here's what I say? Always be producing. And yes. It doesn't matter what you're producing. Are you producing lunch for a bunch of jerks? Yeah. Or are you producing an awesome podcast? Or are you producing a movie? Or anything like you're, you're, you're doing it right. You're anticipating problems. You know, you're exceeding expectations. You're getting better at it. You're innovating. Mm-hmm. And you're, that is satisfying no matter what you're doing. Obviously, more satisfying if the money is rolling in (laughs) but you know uh it's a building block or not i don't know no i think i think i think i I, like it i'm on board i think that's a good that's good life advice from from a seasoned veteran of the industry and none of none of none of those guys are mean guys in any way so it's like it's not like you're really like working for these terrible people that are like stir my peanut butter you know it's not like that it's all very funny and we're all very self-conscious about the idea we're being served yes for sure. We have the decency to be self-conscious. But then I was a surprise guest on your surprise talk show. That's right. hundred. Let's, yes. let, let's surprise Mitch. So you were previously a guest on What's Going On. So we were a surprise we guest on Let's Surprise Mitch. Yes. And <laughs> my dumb bit on that was like, you know, Mitch, congratulations. You're, you've made it. You're, you're, on, you're doing a talk show. This is a pilot. Yeah, you know you've you succeeded in the comedy world. You're part of the birthday boys. Like look at all these cool people at your show. Like, you know you're no longer our PA. And then I brought out some peanut butter and made you stir it <laughs> for everybody. At the, That's you know. no, I, I it, it made me. You appreciate where you where you, you also <laughs> the pet pilot never went. <laughs> <laughs> but that that was such a that was such one of the, that was one of the greatest surprises of that entire show's run is that they you had the funniest line about oh, fuck. do you remember that line you said to james Marsden Marsden? yes about like describing cyclops's role in the x-men oh god yeah you had the greatest phrasing of like 
how important Cyclops was to the X-Men. I think I called him the Dave Ferguson of the X-Men, which made maybe no sense to half the audience. I know Dave Ferguson. It <laughs> doesn't make any sense to me. Uh that was that was a great surprise, and I look fondly upon my time at The Simpsons. It was it was it was a great time in my life, and and uh, all those guys are really great. And you know, The Simpsons is is the show that like that ev- that everyone rips off. Oh, you sure. Know? So so and and Selman and all those guys are are so great. And and Selman, I would say, ha- always had the biggest lunch order. He's a foodie for sure, and 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 I know that some people kind of. Uh, what, you, what, what, what am I trying to say? They kind of roll their eyes at the term "foodie" now, yeah. right? They, they, it's they, a useful they, word. It's, it Very is a useful, useful word, and, and but you're kind of the first guy that, like, uh, you 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 would ha- you get so much stuff at lunch and eat it all. You you have a huge appetite, mm-hmm. but you love good food. And I, the first time I ever went to you, Mommy Burger, was because you left. Uh, a safari window open, and it was like talking about like how s- you mommy was opening up, and you could have gone a lot worse. Safari window <laughs> leaving open, <laughs> but you 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 always yeah. were kind of on top of like cool new food places. Tickle porn. This seems good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got very close to doing that once. Tickle I was porn. Like, yeah. Well, I was like very broke, and I saw like an online ad, and it was this like predated Craigslist. And I think it was like twenty. And it was for it was it was it was for tickle board. And they were looking for very ticklish guys, and I was like, "I'm very ticklish." Oh I can do this. my god! And it was just like there, like there's no sex. You'll just be naked, and <laughs> we're just gonna tickle you. And I was like so close to like I. I would have no, and it was for like fifteen hundred dollars for like a one day shoot. I was like, I think I should just. This is a re- this is a real story that. You yeah, were- I was like, I was like pretty close. To, well, let's like pretty close intellectually. I wasn't like <laughs> interfacing with a guy and exchanging emails and text messages, but I was like very like I could do this, and then I, I eventually talked my way out of it, talked myself out of it. That's the funniest thing I've ever heard. That you almost were in tickle porn, where you got naked and got tickled on camera. I would. It's Ooh, kind of like what gender is tickling you. I think I'm, it's another guy. It was another guy who would have been almost, tickled. It would be a guy. God, yeah. God, why not? God, why didn't that happen? <laughs> I, mean, I, I guess cursed. It's fine. I cursed. Would have been fine. In a way, it. I would have. If you're heterosexual, which is all good. If a man <laughs> well, is doing is it, it's more of a job. Yeah. It's more of a job, and a woman you get mixed up. I also think too, I would really sell it because I am genuinely very ticklish. That's a skill, and, and I could Why ham- not? Yeah, I would. Some guys have camera, giant but... wangs that can go all night <laughs> and deliver just loads of jizz. <laughs> oh and, God, I wish you were in tickle porn so bad. I, I wish it's it. Not were. too late. He's still ticklish. Yeah, I mean, that I doesn't do go it. away. <laughs> Once this flames out and <laughs> I lose my writing job, I'm so Doughboys sure. is the only thing separating you from tickle porn. Because if so. The podcast is Oprah. After tonight. <laughs> oh man! No, he's the John Holmes of tickle porn. He's so ticklish. <laughs> All parts can elicit. Gen- I mean, I assume genuine laughter is what. Yeah, works the fetish angle. Like that doesn't seem fake. I think that's the thing. I think they, those guys I, can smell fake laughing a mile away. The posts seem very like kind of clear of like we want actually t- like no f- we don't want fakers. We want actually ticklish. I think actually ticklish may have been in in, in all caps at some point. I don't um, know if you got to know Weiger, but this is one of the funniest things I've ever 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 heard in my life. I. I can't get over this. You you thought about doing tickle porn? That's the funniest. Is it, well, thing. I think again. I think porn is maybe. It was yeah. It's like a for a fetish. Website. Oh, I'm so, I'm yeah. sorry. You almost got naked and got tickled on a webcam. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh man. That's a uh, that's very. So anyway, I was like an early adopter of a foodie <laughs> um, persona. Actually, I have I do have a kind of a foodie. I have a foodie Twitter. Feed. That's right. Yeah, and yeah. You, we you, about this. Every, every year in LA, you you have a big party called Beefsteak. Yeah, I throw a big beefsteak party every oh, wow. year. Nick, you'll have to come this oh, year. I would love to. It's the best time. Mitch, Mitch you've been right. I've been. Uh, yeah, a couple times, I believe. Yeah, I've done four of them so far. It's a bit charity event downtown. It's all. It's har- fun. Harkens back to an earlier era of men's dinners where you the, you wear a tux, put on an apron, and they serve sliced tenderloin. With no forks, no napkins, and no silverware, and you eat with your hands. Oh, and wow. We've kind of modernized it, and there's fancy drinks, and we invite ladies, and every kind of minority you could want, and and, <laughs> and it's diverse, and you know, the only, we just keep those three rules of you know, yeah. no forks, no napkins, and no plates, and so you eat everything with your hands, and it's a kind of a magical Hollywood night. It's it's really great, and, and, and uh, yeah, Sel- Selman was always 
a guy who was telling me to go to the even for lunch at the Simpsons, I would pick stuff up that was like kind of a cool new spot in the neighborhood. And but now and I've given Angeles. up on that. Now I just eat healthy at lunch. And... I know. I, I I I know that change in you. You've gotten very into fitness. Very into fitness. You can easily kick my ass now, which you no, probably could I before. Can't. Yeah, I would say as a you know for someone who describes himself as a foodie, you're you're seem like a very very fit, uh, fit slender man. You seem like you, you keep you. yourself in good shape. So what is the what is the secret to like being able to indulge while also kind of uh, making it so you don't let yourself go completely? As someone who loves food, well, I just you know work out every day. Gotcha. Eat healthy around the office. Don't drink soda. Try to avoid sugar. Don't eat most snacks or processed foods. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, when there's something exciting, I just go 100% berserk. Great. So like Chinese food and San Gabriel, berserk. You know, giant steak dinner, berserk. You know, buffalo wild wings, berserk. <laughs> and here we are. Here we are. And, and so buffalo wild wings, um, this was the chain uh, you decided to, you wanted to go with mm-hmm. uh, for this episode. So what was it that propelled you because I was very surprised when we arrived at the restaurant we ate there together I was surprised to learn that this was your first visit to Buffalo Wild Wings and yet this was the place that you wanted to, t- to discuss well I, I was always fascinated by it um, there was a comedy Twitter feed called Dad Boner oh yeah you may yes, not yes. have heard of yeah. which I thought was really funny and kind of a creative way to use the form and that we're about a kind of a loser guy in Michigan who loved Buffalo Wild Wings and mango habs, the mango habanero wings. And then a friend of mine at The Simpsons actually did a pilot with the dad boner guy, and they tried to get it going. I don't know where that's at. But uh, so I hadn't heard of it. That's how I go. That was my entryway into the B- B-dubs, as, as they call it. Yes. Was through dad boner? Mm-hmm, was through dad boner. And I always loved bar- wings, buffalo wings, if they're from Buffalo or elsewhere. Mm-hmm. And I... I can always eat tons of them. I think I'm kind of a good judge of what makes a good wing. Mm-hmm. I'm interested in them. So, and, ba- so you know, ba- and then I was sort of captivated by their their advertising and their sure. just their presence in society. Like, why haven't I been part of this yet? And then, okay, so then I think two years ago at the Simpsons for a Christmas present, every I got everybody a twenty five dollar Buffalo Wild Wing gift card as a kind of funny office Christmas present that I gave to all the writers and the guys in the booth and the actors and the, and the PAs. This is after you left, Mitch. Sorry. Oh, man. I should have mailed you one. Well, I, 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 we'll, we'll talk about it, but I but I, I, I got my gift tonight, so. That's true. <laughs> so I bought like like $2,000 worth of Buffalo Wild Wings gift cards, which I gave away maybe a third. <laughs> <laughs> you overestimated. So, yeah, yeah. I just, you know, it's just, just always overdo it. So I have a lot of this currency built up in various drawers around my house and office. So when it came time to pay the bill tonight, I spread the yellow gold. <laughs> it was very great. We we well we'll get into exactly what we ordered later. But mm-hmm. you basically some... had like a like a deck, like a playing cards deck worth of Buffalo Wild mm-hmm. Wings cards that you that you whipped out and, yeah. and used to pay the I bill. I still have. Oh Jesus! I still have like. like Three hundred dollars of buffalo in my pocket. <laughs> you know what? Actually, I'll tell you a true story. That yeah. Another. This is like I like to teach life lessons for your listeners. I once gave one of these as a where the writers and everyone who I gave them to went ha ha half funny joke gift. Threw them in a drawer. Never used them. I'm not sure. go, right. We're not going to this place. I gave one to the guy at my bank that I go to who lets me park my car in front without doing the slow valet. He lets me just leave it in front. Like I gave it to him. He never forgot it for as a Christmas present. Wow. So this, this nice guy just, for the, now I just go to the bank. I just walk away from my car. No ticket. I don't need to get validated. Wow. Like it left such an impression on him that he, I gave him this instead of 20 bucks. Everyone else gives him the 20 bucks yeah, for yeah. Christmas. Good guy. Always be tipping. Also, good lesson for everyone. Always tip. Tip everybody. You can never tip too much. So I gave him the B-dubs card as a tip, and he just, we were like buddies forever. Like that yellow, <laughs> it's a good logo, right? The yellow it's and black logo. left a, like a real imprint on him. Those ungrateful writers should have yeah. enjoyed that gift more. Yeah, no, he did not leave an imprint on them. But this <laughs> sweet guy who runs the City National Bank, Century City Valet Line full of like, you know, bankers and 
investment jerks. I, w- I would love that gift too because it's a fun outing. I get to go to oh, Buffalo yeah. Wild Wings and, a, and I would bring maybe a couple friends and uh, we'd toss that in and go a little bit wild. I, I kind of like when I get a gift card for that reason. There's something of like, you know, like I feel like you'll get like an Amazon gift card, like, okay, that's great. This is something I can use. This is a useful gift card. But there's something about like a restaurant gift card that's kind of like, oh, this is an experience I have. This yeah. has like, this is like, I get to go have this visit and then I have this attached to this memory attached to this experience and that's associated with this gift of this individual. I got a, I was at a Target once and I was waiting in line and you know how in line they have like the, the big row of gift cards as like impulse purchases mm-hmm. um, and there was a Buffalo Wild Wings gift card but the framing around it said MVP most valuable present. Really? Like, <laughs> it's a bit, quite a claim. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, but hearing this now, maybe it is the most valuable present. Maybe that is a uh, something. Yeah, that's that, kind of that's a little much. Yeah. You're right. But it, it it's the experience is always fun to go to get to get someone out of the house, especially me. Like I was saying, I don't I don't do as much anymore. So I like to I like to get myself out and and uh, out and about and and tonight I really enjoyed our experience there. But before we get into that, I mm-hmm. want to ask you. Okay. So you're talking about wings. What to you makes a perfect wing? You you brought Good that question. up. Uh, what 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 is it about? Well, it? Let me start by saying what I don't like. I know what you're going to say. I do not like breaded wings. Yes. I like a clean chicken that goes right in the fryer and the mm-hmm. fat melts away, and so you're not getting fat pockets. You're not getting stuff you can pick off. Mm-hmm. Like I assume B dubs are frozen wings, right? I mean, I can't. I imagine. would think they'd have to be. They have fresh chicken wings. That seems like too much for them, but. There's an advertisement with a live chicken in a car seat buckled in. (laughs) Oh, yeah. There was like a – this was a poster in the lobby of the the B-dubs that we went to. And, yeah, it was like a terrified chicken like strapped in seemingly against its will, the passenger seat of a sedan, I guess being carried off to his death. It was was really, really gruesome. maybe it had been in – Enticed into a limousine. Oh, that maybe that's and it. Then, <laughs> then brought to murder, to be murdered. You know, I actually have pet chickens as part of my uh, urban farming. You know, wait, is this real? Yeah, yeah. We have seven chickens in a coop in my backyard. Oh, Dear wow. God, I did not know that. This. I call the Egg McMansion, <laughs> and that um, they, my kid, they're kind of pets for the kids, and they, they, we get we get eggs. Do they make noise at all? Are yeah, they noisy? A little bit. We've had roosters. We've had to get. We gave our. We got a rooster once by mistake because someone poorly sexed the ch- sexed the chicks. Oh, uh, okay. And so my wife put an ad on Craigslist to just give it away, and she gave it away for five dollars just so they wouldn't eat it. So it would be more expensive than chicken at the grocery oh, store. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Okay. So she gives it to this guy, and she gives it away, and the guy says, don't worry. I'm not going to use it for cockfighting. <laughs> like, no, one, no one thought that, that, oh, God. It was, that, was, that didn't even cross our mind. There, there, there is a weird – I will say this. I do like chicken a lot. I eat chicken a lot. But when I think about chicken, I sometimes get a little grossed out, just the amount of chicken – and just the amount of chicken it takes to make buffalo wings. Yes. It is kind of – it is a thing that I don't want to think about for too long. I don't even have, like, a problem as much with beef or anything. I, I But specifically thinking about chicken – and birds are just kind of a weirder animal. Well, and, yeah, and, and comparing it to beef, I mean, like, the amount of beef you can get from one cow versus the amount of chickens yes, you yeah. need for an order of wings. I mean, you're talking about more than one chicken for a single small order of five wings at Buffalo Wild Wings. Yes. You know? They should make part of their campaign that that's the only part of the chicken they use. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're proud of the fact that they wa- they throw the rest away and they waste it. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, 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 like for some reason, that's a point of pride or excellence, and not even processed for like animal feed. Like no, they no. just like destroy it, <laughs> throw it in a pot, burn it, or something. <laughs> but yeah, and probably the life of the chickens that become the buffalo wild wing chickens is so terrible that the limousine abduction is a princess fairy tale by comparison. Oh yeah, even if his death is you know locked in a hot car parked in like a hundred ninety oh, degree, hundred ten degree Phoenix weather or something like yeah. that, that's still better than right. what someone's uh, chickens undergoing Can in I a just factory farm. Say that John uh, Wayne Gacy made this up on his own. There was no, <laughs> they had no mention of how hot the car was. It was just a chicken driving in a car. I'm extrapolating that. from the scenario that's given to us in a still image. Um, so so but that's right, so breaded wings, yes. soggy wings. Okay. Bad. I hate breading. I hate fat pockets. I want a good, clean, crispy wing, like mm-hmm. 
honestly, I don't want it too big and I don't want it too small. As we were saying, I prefer the the little wingette to the drumette. Sure. Yes. That's just a personal taste. Yep. As our who was our friend at dinner? Jordan Morris. As Jordan Morris, was yes. saying there's something fun about poking the flesh out from the between the the fibia and the tibia or whatever of the <laughs> poor chicken. Yeah, I don't know the anatomy, but you get to dissemble well, it a humans, little bit. Humans, right? Isn't that? I don't know if it's the arm or the leg. I, I don't, don't know, know if that. Yeah, I don't know if that transfers to wings. Arm, leg, leg, or arm. I forget. But um, so I think, I think on that level, the you know the B dubs, you know, and their mm -hmm. frozen agribusiness nightmare Cisco chicken that they fed us was was pretty successful. Just just in terms of the base layer of yes, like it, you know, as terrible chicken wings is Fresh Brothers. Yeah, we mm. haven't done Fresh Brothers yet. Fresh yep. Brothers, I'm just gonna say right now, zero forks. Wow, oh, wow, wow. Okay, that's a throwaway. I know it's an official. I, uh, I I like Fresh Brother for brothers for other things, but I, off super off. Topic. <laughs> but but no, I I I know. See, my issue with almost all kind of uh, fast food or chain wings is one of the biggest things for me is crispiness. I need them to yes. be crisp. Yes. And I don't even know if Buffalo Wild Wings makes them very crispy, but they do a good enough job. I think I think I think every other wing place is like. You'll just get these soggy kind of weird messes, like buffalo, like a Domino's buffalo wings. Oh, and even Domino's might be the best of the bottom barrel wings, but they're they're just kind of chewy yes. and 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 I, I I need my wings to be truly crispy. They have to be a crispy, crispy agreed, wing. Agreed. Uh, but I I like the drumettes. I'm a drum I'm a drumette guy. Just easier. I just like to eat eat them and and you're in and out and you're done. But but. It's gotta be. It's gotta be crispy. What's the name for the weird kind of mushrooming side flesh that kind of pops oh off God. a drumette sometimes? That like yeah. extra tumor that you're eating. It's some sort oh, I of love cartilage it. or yeah, something. Yeah, no, I like I it know. too. Yeah, yeah, no, I, like uh, I know people. My godfather's daughter, like she'll like eat the like she'll like get the marrow it's out. It's an I mean, oddly she, specific relationship, by the way. My god sister is that a thing? Is that that a, is that more? They're like, like a, family. So oh, like, okay, uh, okay, yeah, Sarah Kylie, she's the best. I love okay. Sarah. But uh, they. She, I like, guess that's that's probably a Catholic thing. I just don't know. Godparents. Yeah. Well, I like. I feel like God, I've heard of godparents, but that, that's like an actual relationship. Yeah. It, it's it's my, my godfather and godmother. I'm very cl close to. Okay. Yeah. Well, then I apologize for belittling that. Yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> uh, like my godfather and godmother are. Yeah, they're like family, and and I feel like their kids feel like cousins or something. Gotcha. But uh, she she would. She now I'm gonna say something that she would eat like almost the marrow. She would get like the marrow out, like the bones when she's done with them are like thin and crispy. And I always kind of nod my hat to her because she she really gets everything out of the wing. Because uh, there are some people who will eat yeah. a wing and will eat the you know the the skin off of it and be done. You know yeah. what I mean? And, yeah, and, I I have an issue with that. I mean, why well, take the two bites and there's tons of meat left on there? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty disgusted. I mean, that chicken was in a limo for you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, no I agree. Seat, no seatbelt. <laughs> Don't wait. There was a seatbelt. <laughs> Dig in there. I mean, like that. That's the thing. And you know, I, I think we might be getting into another section for debate here, a, a broader wing issue, which is the bone-in wings, the traditional wings, and sure. then the more recent phenomena of the boneless wings. Now, mm -hmm. the bone-in wings, there's certainly some challenge there. There's the element of I like both the drumettes and the wingettes. I like I like a fifty-fifty split. I get to the, the alternate. I think and, I would like eighty them. twenty. <laughs> yeah, be perfect for me. <laughs> I can get that. The golden mean. That. Um, but, but I mean, it's, you know, I, I, there's definitely a challenge to eating that and the boneless wings by contrast, mm -hmm. um, perhaps I think maybe originally pioneered by chilies or at least popularized by chilies. Okay. Um, interesting. It, there's it, more skin on a wingette, I would say. Yes. I like skin. Yes. As yeah. long as it's not fatty, as long as it's properly crisped. Yes. So, so, but at the restaurant, we talked a little bit about how you mm -hmm. feel about boneless wings and where do you stand on that issue? Well... I you know it's, it sounds like foodie snob stuff, but like chicken on the bone just has so much more flavor and just natural chickeniness and the the stuff I didn't I didn't I think the weak the weakest thing of our meal tonight was in the chicken area was boneless. the boneless wings. I feel mm -hmm. they were like the ratio of like breading mm -hmm. to meat was not great. They Very were very heavily too breaded. chewy, kind of. There you really weren't getting any chickeniness. It could have been almost any meat in there. I mean, it was better than a McNugget. Although harder than a McNugget, yes, they were a little the they were 
Crunchy. Well, it's, it's funny because I wish we could have gone to Wingstop right afterwards and ordered all the exact same stuff and compared. Mm, I, that I'm would have been an interesting challenge. I'm that sweating is. right now from the amount of food we ate, but we'll get into <laughs> that too in a minute. I, I, I like boneless wings. He, he, the, my, my wing history is that when I was a little boy, I remember trying buff, a buffalo wing, and they'd been around. Obviously, they've been around for a long time. But I remember when I tried them, they seemed new and exotic. Yeah, like uh, it was actually my godfather's son, Neil Kylie, and he was a. Uh, eating buffalo wings, and I, and I tried them for the first time. I'm like, ooh, these are spicy, but I kind of like these. And I was like a little boy, and I wasn't a very adventurous eater at that point. And I was like, wow, these are these are, these are are crazy. I had no idea how big wings would become. Wings are, I mean, th- for such a messy thing, we've already talked about tonight, a thing where you're literally just tearing apart these bones and pushing meat into your mouth. It's a very, very messy meal, but it's one of the biggest foods now, I feel like, one of the biggest – foods that we eat. Oh, and, we're and, in the midst of a wing craze, for it's a, sure. A hundred percent. And I feel like the, the you know, like pizza and wings is almost like burger and french fries to me. Like, like when I when I get wings, I want to have, a, I want pizza and wings. I feel like they complement each other so well. I think I may have said that on the podcast before and then you yep. just, yeah, okay. Oh, no, 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 for sure. Yeah. I'm not stealing. <laughs> God, this whole episode is about stealing. I'm not stealing. intellectual property theft. I, I, I 100% agree with that. I, I think that it's, I think it's, Pizza and wings is is they're they're so great together. I've never been a, a huge wing by themselves guy because it just is too much of a thing to to eat alone and 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 it's too much for me. But I did enjoy tonight's experience. But I also like boneless buffalo wings and I and I remember when those came out years ago and and there was a good few spots in Quincy that made them well. Some of them would make them crispy, but for the most part, the great buffalo tenders I had weren't really crispy. Uh, breaded buffalo tenders. They would just be kind of like nice sluts, sl- nice sl- slices. <laughs> nice sluts. Oh, right. Jesus. oh boy! God, what's on my fucking head tonight? Tickle, uh, tickle porn. <laughs> uh, the, they call, would... the callback is like the bread and butter of the comedy oh. podcast. <laughs> uh, porn. Oh, by the way, every time Weiger's laughed tonight, I've been tickling him too. Uh, <laughs> like, um, yeah, they would they would be nice slices of chicken breast and and. And they would be cooked to be like crispy, but they wouldn't be like super breaded and crispy. Which tonight's were very breaded, very crispy. But I'm a guy. I know. I know that this is a lot of people will not like this, but I, I like boneless wings, and I, I get when people kind of turn their nose up at it. But I think it's easier to do a bad job with bone-in wings. Like I, I think. Sure. I, I think mm. I, risk, like the higher risk, higher reward. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you, you, what you, do you think? Where do you stand? I bone in. I'm a big bone in guy, but I tell you, I'm okay with a boneless. But I think I think overall bone in is the way. Also, to go once you ways. have kids, the chicken tender really is a fail. You know what I mean? Oh, like it's, it's oh such, yeah. Like the default horrible hotel room service. Yeah, yeah. Babysitter disaster. Like you, you just that's a good. You're point. eating that. Things have gone so wrong for you. Do you like with as a foodie with kids? Do you like find yourself like? Will you feed your kids like those like dino shaped chicken nuggets or whatever? Or, like, will you still like get them that kind of weird Franken food? Or are you a little bit more like conscious about that? Or how how do you? Uh... Yeah, I actually, let my wife do it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, they're, they're kids and my kids are pretty good. Like, I don't yeah. force stuff on them. I want them to be adventurous, and they like ramen. That's, oh, that's pretty great. good. Oh, that's you good. know, they like barbecue. So there's they have a couple. Food areas that they they're into. And they don't love everything. Like they don't really like Chinese food, which is too bad. Cause I love. Chinese. Oh man, when I, when I, when I was a, when I was a, a boy, I was afraid to try Mexican food for a really long time. I mm-hmm. I, I, I was kind of put off by now it's one of my favorite well, foods. probably the mexican food back in quincy in the 80s <laughs> was not so great and there there was one place and for me as a little as a like you know as like a six-year-old boy it was almost kind of like a culture shock and there were like these chichis mech- was more chichis uh, oh, oh the, it, i think we went to uh chichis el, was el, a- el sarape chichis oh no chichis was a boston new england area yes proto mexican food chain of one of the first americanized chains of of Mexican food that probably doesn't exist anymore, but it was very nachos was so were so exotic back then. Yes, no, and that's 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 a weird thing to remember, like as a kid that like nachos were not a normal, you know, like I was like, oh, this is crazy to me, you know, like, like all the yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean wings, stuff, potato skins, but all the kind of fun party food that is like the most boring thing on the TGI Fridays menu is what used to be kind of exciting and exotic. And oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I slightly 
as a boy, remember that sort of thing, like mozzarella sticks, trying those for the first sure. time. I'd be like, right. whoa, what are these things? But but I'll stand up for boneless buffalo wings. All right. You're right. You're, I, I think you're right. But I hate when you get a – don't you hate when you get a gamey wing, when you get like a, a really I'll, like – I'll play Russian roulette every time. Mm-hmm. All, right, All right, Nick, walk us through the what we got. Yes, yeah, so let, like, I'm, let's, I'm let's get to our, our meal. Oh no, no, we, we don't. Don't worry. We, we're 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 a hundred percent conscious on of it. But we, no, I was, I'm worried. I don't want to. I don't want to keep you guys out. Of we appreciate it. We, <laughs> we edit appreciate out this a gentle part of the discussion. Edit this, out. <laughs> this is all great. It's all going in. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So uh, we we sat down at Buffalo Wild Wings. We had a party for our three of us plus uh, Jordan Morris. Very crowded. I mean, it's doing super crowded. I will say this Tuesday night. Yeah, the night after Tuesday Monday night. night Football. The night after Monday Night Football. There's no major sports event on TV tonight, as far as I can tell. Yep. And um, we left when we left about 10 p.m. to come over here. There was still we he- overheard someone. I overheard the host saying that there was a, still a 20 minute wait for tables. So it's the just jam packed the Burbank Buffalo Wild Wings mm-hmm. on a Tuesday evening. Um, uh, so yeah, it's it's current prosperity is borne out in in, in what we what we witnessed. I think um, I might buy some Buffalo Wild Wings stock after tonight. Might not be a bad idea. You might have some with all those cards. You yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of investors in our audience. Mm, I know that there's at least one. Jack Elson. <laughs> but that's it. Your roommate Jack counts as an investor. To me, he does. <laughs> all right. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, all those cards are practically currency at this point, so uh, hang on to those. Uh, those I'll appreciate over time. Um, so <laughs> we all sat down and we Trading got- Trading them on the gift card market. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, uh, so we had a strategy going in, and this was your suggestion, Matt, and you had like a very aggressive strategy that we didn't <laughs> end up executing. Aggressive. Luckily. But it, we, you were there are 22 sauces uh, by our count. Wet and dry. Wet and dry, including sauces and also including the, the dry rubs. Um, there's 22 varieties. And uh, uh, Matt suggested getting all 22 uh, for a party of four. So four of each. So. Yeah. The, so the maximum, the minimum order for a small order of wings is is five wings. And so, you know, five times 22, 110 wings. Is that the correct math? I believe so. Um, 110 wings for four people. A little daunting. So instead, we ordered them in batches of 20 um, and uh, just sort of got a few. So the first batch we got, actually, you know what? Why don't we back it up for a second? Let's Quickly talk go over apps. apps. Let's yeah. go over apps mm. because uh, we can chronologically. It's not as fun. I got myself a black cherry mojito, which was tasty. The yes. drink was actually pretty good. Someone, you got yourself a beer, right? Later. Yeah, but so, you were even too full to drink almost all of that beer. I didn't want to drink the beer on an empty stomach. <laughs> <laughs> I got the uh, the Peach Smash, which was a Jameson Irish whiskey with peaches and ginger beer. I originally ordered uh, something else, and they told me they couldn't make it. That's right. Yeah, there, there was another specialty cocktail that I neglected to write down that was earlier on the menu. Um, and then we got our, our, our round of apps. We got the soft pretzels, which come with a queso cheese spicy and also a spicy mustard. We got the cheese curds, which come with a Southwestern Ranch dipping sauce. Onion rings, which also come with a Southwestern Ranch dipping sauce. And then we were accidentally delivered another table's mozzarella sticks, and we decided just to keep them and just to dig in, Mm -hmm. Um, which was, you know, maybe ethically hazy, but I think we were all kind of in the mood of like, oh, they gave them to us accidentally. We probably got charged for them. Yeah, and and it came with marinara sauce, so that was good for the the little uh, cheese curds. Yeah, so the cheese curds, they're kind of like these these little, uh, they're basically about the size of cheese balls. They're just like little, you know, nugget-shaped um, fried, I mean, exactly what they sound like, fried cheese curds. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think very tasty, a nice texture to them. The cheese flavor was really good. I think uh, the kind of the standout of the apps. Yeah, they were, they were the best of the appetizers. And all the appetizers were good. It wasn't like there was any, like, real home runs. The, 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 the two ones that I think that are closest to the home runs are the cheese curds and the onion rings, which were really great. And someone, I know that you stayed off the apps a little bit. You tried them, but you were saving yourself four wings, right? Yeah, I really had a hankering for some wings. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the curds were fine. I, nothing was very exciting to me in the app department. Mm-hmm. Like, no I had studied the menu pretty carefully before coming in tonight. And I, I'm not going to lie. I had a plan. And <laughs> oh, every, for sure. Ev- everything that wasn't wings, I wasn't that interested in. And, and you know what? I think you made, you made a good point earlier about just how like how boring that stuff can be. Like the mozzarella sticks came, but I, I wasn't – I think we were just even too lazy to say that they weren't ours. Like, yeah. You could give me a blind <laughs> taste test with those mozzarella sticks and like – eight different chain restaurants, and I could not tell them apart. They were just, like, very... They might as well have been the TGI Friday's frozen uh, mozzarella sticks they sell at the grocery store. They were very just indistinct. Um, 
But cheese curds and onion rings, definitely. Cheese curds were good. Onion good. rings were good. Soft pretzels were fine. Nothing special. If you really want that pretzel texture, uh, that queso cheese dipping sauce is pretty good. Uh, what I will say is... And, and I think this kind of speaks to to Selman's point, but but to broaden out a little bit is like none of the apps were. I know I called the cheese curds the standout among this batch, but none of the apps are particularly standouts on their own. Nothing is like, oh yeah, you should definitely get this if you go to Buffalo Wild Wings. And perhaps that is part part of the issue with that is that Buffalo Wild Wings themselves are. Yeah, you. Yeah. Hold on one sec. No worries. Hi. How are you doing? We're rec- we're recording the podcast now. I I hope that we keep this in. Actually, <laughs> I think is everything okay? Mr. Zellman has gotten a call from his wife, I believe. Oh, don't walk home. Okay. Bye. Bye. Uh, okay, my wife is murdered. That'll make for a good. This podcast will now become a serial. Or... <laughs> wow, this is a great alibi podcast. That I did not plan. <laughs> you heard the genuine worry in my voice. Yeah, maybe maybe you planned this entire night on a little yeah. too well. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. One of every wing. It'll keep us out all night. That wasn't a pre-recorded call that just came in. It's part of my devilish Columbo style called Alibi at B-Dubs. That's the name of this episode. <laughs> um, okay, back to death. Where was, yeah, where was I in my my rant? Oh, yes, yes. So uh, uh, none of the, the apps are particularly great, and I think that perhaps speaks to wings. Buffalo wings are an app, basically. You're going to a place that has just large wow. portions of an app, which is wings. They, most chain restaurants, that's what where, where they're organized on the menu. They come as an appetizer. So, like, what app are you getting at this app place well, I don't know, kind of a, a hodgepodge of forgettable fried foods, and and maybe you should just stick to the wings and go full on. And if you want a little uh, some fries or something or some some onion rings, I guess maybe that's the direction you go. I think you're gonna get some flack for this, uh, for that statement, but I I kind of agree with you. But I think there's going to be a lot of people out there who are angry at you and think that wings are full meal. Uh, I think be a full meal. I will say this: I have had wings as a meal a number of times. I think, but I, speaking about the section they'd be organized on on a normal menu, I feel like you're going to see wings in the appetizer portion. Selman, what do you think? I think, with the exception of restaurants that really take it to the limit, like your B Dubs's or your Wing Stops's, sure, it's a little sad to get <laughs> wings as your entree. Like, agree. Maybe the restaurant has failed, yep. or you have. A, Failure of ordering imagination. Uh, yes, every place I've ever gotten wings as an entree has been like a wings place, like right. locally in LA, like I want, Hot Wings Cafe. What I was excited about this place was, in my mind, and I think they pulled it off, is the sort of the ambition, the scope, the number of flavors, just the pure grub food craziness of how hard they committed to wings, and the, you know, various you know, sort of creativity they apply to the sauces and. I wish I'd seen that a little more in the apps. Like, why why not pour some kind of sauce or make that available on the curds? Sure. Buffalo curds, is that too hard to think of? I mean, if I owned a chain restaurant like B-Dubs, every day I would be thinking of new crazy things to put on the menu that would differentiate the place from TGI Fridays or Hooters and all mm-hmm. these places that just do potato skins and whatever. And those places are always trying to add, you know, sriracha and you know, wasabi and, you know, to take these foodie flavors and ruin them <laughs> by putting them on horrible <laughs> fried frozen food. But, you know, that's, I mean, that's the fun of having a restaurant like that. So I want to see that on every level of the menu. Yeah, a little more innovation in the app yeah, sector would be nice there. Um, so that's then the we short way of saying it. We, no, that's fair. Uh, we got into the wings then. So our first batch, we got a bone in batch uh, and we got two large orders. Ba- uh, order one. Salt and vinegar, this is a dry rub, honey mustard, honey barbecue, and Caribbean jerk. Um, the second order was Asian zing, mango habanero, Thai curry, and spicy garlic. Do so, you want to talk about those ones real quick? Yeah, let's, let's dig into those. Right, let's and then do we'll a quick 15 on back. each flavor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we all, my favorite was of, one of my favorites of the night was the salt and vinegar. Really well, good. Yes. Very but tasty. I think we all agreed that the dry rub wings were the best wings, right? This was a I Jordan Marsh recommendation. I wish we tried more dry rub flavors. Yes. Yeah. Uh, our, our friend- like uh, They're open until two. 
We can go back after this, Mitch. <laughs> oh, my dear God. We could do that. I mean, I think our listeners would want us to. <laughs> they want They want to know it's when they... Right, it's when five this, minutes away. Yeah, mentally, when they turn off this podcast, when this podcast ends, they want to know that after it finished recording, we went to an, <laughs> we, we went back to guys, Buffalo we, Wild Wings. What if we... And we're not going to do this. <laughs> yeah. We went right now, to, ate, some, ate the rest of the dry rub section, came back. I would be so... So sick. <laughs> I told Weiger that I'm a, a bigger, heavier guy, but I was like doing the heavy breathe on the way to Weiger's car. While I was like, I Ugh. was too. It was, it was, it, we, Selman is a great eater because he, 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 at first you thought you had too much and then you, you settled in and you were fine. And, and Weiger and I really did not do well. I, I was, I am still full and I'm, yeah. Um, I'm I'm sweating <laughs> and, and burping uh, silently while we do this podcast. I could eat the leftover wings we brought back. <laughs> which which I did. I tried one of every wing. Mm -hmm. I did too. And 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 you may even had more of that. Uh, to, if I if I want to tip my hat to you, you 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 did a good job. But can you just go over those wing the the first batch? Yes. The first so batch. Like, we'll just do the, these first four: salt and vinegar, Great. honey Great. mustard, honey also, barbecue. Can, I'm sure the wings are frozen, but. Not fatty, like mm -hmm. it's it, not covered in a sauce. The wing is out there, exposed to the world. Mm -hmm. Yes, this was a, this was bone in. If I didn't already say it, and juicy, juicy, juicy. very juicy, not very dry. Juicy. They yeah. weren't dry. Nope. Maybe we should do some research and find out if they're frozen. I'm sure they are, but we can find that out. We can find that out. All right, so but keep hitting the flavors. Let's let's hear them. Um, honey mustard. I didn't love the honey mustard. I didn't le love either of the honey ones that much. Forgettable, I'd say. I don't Nothing love sweet special. wings in general, yeah. yes. but I'm glad we ordered them just to have a yeah. taste of the spectrum. Yeah, yeah, similar feeling on the honey barbecue. Just both kind of these these indistinct kind of uh, slightly syrupy, honey-dominant flavors that I'm just not crazy about in a, on a hot wing. Can I order tell you wing. something? I get upset when people order barbecue wings. I don't like barbecue wings. Interesting. I like barbecue chicken. I don't like barbecue wings. I I, I agree. Why Why not get buffalo wings? What, you're going to get the buffalo hot sauce. Why are you going to get buff, Why are you going to get barbecue wings? But I'm sure there's some people who won't like that. So, and then we closed that that batch out with we the can't we can't penalize the restaurant though. People want sweet sauce. Yeah, of course, one hundred percent. I think that's a thing in its favor is that it has so many different sauces that there will be something for everybody, and you can order them in small batches. So you know you could you could split an order like this and to, for four different people's tastes. Yeah. Um. So uh, what's and the last one? The last one was Caribbean jerk. That, that was, was a, good. Yeah, that was that was good. It was just a little strong. It was it was definitely an intense flavor. I remember. Um. Which sounds is, like a the punchline to a dad joke. I feel like Caribbean jerk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, TBD dad joke. Uh, or just a Nick Weiger joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a dad in the room who uh, didn't like your dumb joke. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, it was good. <laughs> I'm just thinking about my wife being killed or not. Um, so, but like, also... In the plus column, mm -hmm. very flexible ordering that we were able to get yes. all these different flavors. I mean, I know you're just frying them, putting them in a bowl and shaking them, but still, mm -hmm. and they were so, everything was beautifully labeled, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's great. We we didn't, we didn't have to memorize anything or guess. I mean, everything had a little sticker on it saying what the flavor was. That, that's yes. true. That's it was like great. made for podcast reviewing. That's a hundred percent. You're you're a hundred percent right. That's such a nice little touch that they put a sticker on every single carton or even if you get the boneless wings and they serve them on one big mm -hmm. platter they put the sticker near each wing it's 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 really well done it is a kind of thing too where it's like you know it's it's kind of wasteful because they're serving everything in these these paper containers so um you know there's a lot like a lot of cardboard there aren't a lot of like re reusable dishes that are going on the table but they are so clearly labeled that it's mm -hmm. like oh okay uh, i don't have to remember what the waitress told me and that goes a long way yeah i think that that caribbean jerk was pretty good i liked all the international faux yes. flavors of taste india the caribbean we got the Caribbean, a, a, the, the country of Asia. <laughs> <laughs> the the Caribbean wings, I were, think, were a mistake, right? Were they? Oh yes, you know, I think we ordered the jalapeno something. I don't remember what it was. Jalapeno, we got the jalapeno car, pineapple, and we got the the Caribbean jerk by mistake, which is okay. It was fine. It worked out. All right, second batch. Let's um, hear it. Asian zing. I liked them. Very spicy. Yeah, I like that good. Asian zing. A little bit of heat to it. Yep. Yeah. Um, kind of that uh that sort of uh. What's the word I'm looking for? It's kind of like that spicy sweet sauce. God, what's the name of it? This Thai, it's like a Thai. Oh, Thai chili sauce. Yeah, it's kind of like a Thai, Thai yeah. chili sauce that was yes. on it a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Also, everything clearly labeled on the smiling to sizzling to screaming. 
<laughs> you know, uh, scale. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They have like a heat thermometer on their menu, which says where these, these go in the heat spectrum. And it's pretty accurate. And I would say if something is on the spicier end, trust the gauge because it, it gets pretty spicy, including our next one, mango habanero. Yeah. Uh, a little too spicy for my blood. It was starting to get pretty hot there. A little too spicy, tasty, but just... Man, it made me sweat, and it takes it takes you a few seconds to recover after eating one. So I would say if you're like if you're like me, and you're not a heat chaser, I'm not like a guy who's like wants mm. to go out and eat a lot of super spicy food. My wife is like that; she loves to eat super spicy food. Your wife and I should go out <laughs> now, now that I'm single, apparently. <laughs> well, yeah. on the prowl, <laughs> um, uh, widower. Also, that's. Much better than divorce guy in terms of <laughs> looking up. You're in there with widower. The, my second dream next to uh, Nick being in tickle porn is Selman stealing uh, Nick's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, it would be great. It would yeah, be great. we could discuss that in the cast. But then she, then she, she and I are together, mm -hmm. stay with me, and she's like, oh, this Selman's so great. And then she tries to tickle me in nothing and tear <laughs> Run, i can't do this runs back she starts tickling you and it's all back how it was we just group wrote a rom-com right here her. um Don't the sick think? tickle freak <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey. uh mayo habanero is good thai curry we had i thought this was a this was quite for me wing of the match wing wow. of the meal i really yeah, like that I thai agree. curry. I, really good i, I mean, liked it a lot salt and vinegar salt and vinegar was maybe my one of my of favorites match. yeah the 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 the, the, the that that the Thai one was was ve also very strong. Yeah, I mean, very strong curry flavor. Overpowering. Yeah, the curry flavor was, was two notches more screaming than Asian zing. Oh, okay, that makes mm -hmm. yeah. It was it was it was it was intense, but uh, but it was good. It was a good wing. They did a good job with it. Really delivers on on what you see there. A hundred percent Thai curry. Um, and then we have the spicy garlic. That was pretty satisfying. I, I, yeah, I liked it. It was very overpowering with the garlic flavor, but they were they were good. The, pretty these, hot. Yeah, I would say these were like mid to high level of uh, uh, where it landed as far as my favorite wings went. Like, not in the top three, but right below that. I don't want to take issue with the smiling, sizzling, screaming meter, but I did think spicy garlic was more spicy than some of those fruity international yeah, gotcha. wings. But, you know, the, like, it didn't rank technically that way. closer to smiling. That's interesting. They have a thing here called the B Dub Sauce Lab. You know what I wonder is the limited edition flavors. I was we didn't really get into that. Yeah, they had a few different uh, alternate flavors that were available. That I don't know if they were seasonal offerings or or what, but they had a ghost pepper one which we um, we, we decided to avoid. Uh, uh, yeah, I wonder how much of it because the thing with eating spicy food is you eat something really spicy, and then if you eat something mildly spicy afterwards, it tastes a lot spicier because it just rejiggers that same. You're heat. right. You're right. So it's hard to gauge without completely clearing your palate between each batch. Yeah. Um, so then we we had we we had a boneless batch. Uh, so we had the uh, Parmesan garlic. Pretty good. Yeah, I thought that was pretty good. I thought that was that, my favorite of the boneless. I think. Okay. Yeah, I thought that was or the good. desert heat. Maybe desert heat. Desert heat was my favorite. Again, of the boneless. dry. Yeah, desert heat was the the dry rub. Yeah, you know Jordan Morris recommended the dry rubs. You were right, Selman. We should have gotten more of them. I would say no, that's. No. That's a thing that I would say as a takeaway to any listeners out there yeah. who want to explore, experiment with B-dubs. Get those dry rubs. They're really great. And then also just you've already got the, the ranch and or blue cheese to dip your wings in. So having a dry rub, it's like you you, if you don't have to worry about it not being moist because you can accentuate its moistness there with those cream-based dipping sauces. I do mm -hmm. think the cream-based dipping sauces do cut mouth burn time in half. Oh, yes. sure. Quite so a th bit. That's not, it's not just pointless calories. It's it serves a purpose. Oh, a hundred percent. Something you, in the dairy or whatever. You need you need them. It's yeah, pure science. With some with some of the hotter ones, you a hundred percent needed them. I keep saying a hundred percent, but oh well, that's my thing. Uh, but a hundred percent spoon nation. A hundred percent spoon nation. A uh, hundred percent spoon nation. You need blue cheese or ranch, especially with yeah with our with our last two, which is that uh, we got the hot. Yes. And then we also got the blazon, which is their... We had to try the We had blazin. to try it, their I mean, hottest one. It wasn't the ghost pepper, but it's the hottest normal sauce. Yeah. It was, it's too hot. It's not enjoyable. I didn't like that one that much. But, it, you know, it's you need that, though. I it think. delivers 100%. Why you know? wimp out? Yeah. I mean, I feel like I there was a challenge where you'd eat 12 of those. Yes, I think you get a... a certain amount of time, get your picture on the wall. Yeah. picture on the wall if you eat I think I could have done that. Yeah. I don't yeah. think I could have done it. If they were boneless, yes... If they were not bonus, no, I, I I don't know if I could have just like 
been picking my way through a wing, it would it, yeah. it would have been tough. Well, because then you get the heat on your lips and your fingertips, and that just like accentuates the challenge. Um, yeah, I think the boneless is easier if that even qualifies for getting your picture on the wall. But yeah, and I think blazon was a threshold where this heat is now mango habanero. These are pretty hot, but I can still enjoy the flavor. Blazon, this is just unpleasant. This yes. is just like a, a sensation I don't really like on my tongue. I probably wouldn't get either if I went back. I know a few people who love. I think Jack Allison loves those mango habaneros, but mm-hmm. I'm just not. It's not for me, but and and then also because of that, the hot wings felt a little, a little too, a little too hot because I was already from the blazing was just sweating. It's so. true. At a certain point, we were blending flavors as our our waitress recommended yes. to us. Actually, mm-hmm. she recommended we get those two flavors together. Remember that? Yeah, yes. she was basically saying that our waitress was great. We really had a yeah. Shout out to the service. It shout was out correct. to uh, Tammy at the Burbank. Uh, uh, she was B-dubs. really sweet. She was fantastic. She was very helpful. She was very attentive. Um, she dealt with our you know sort of manic way we were trying to to yeah neurotic Selman crazy <laughs> controlling <laughs> type A unrealistic. But I will say you you live by your word and we it, to, we tipped her very well just like you said you, you, he's, he you doesn't just say guys. it on the podcast. It will, it will come back to you. Tip everybody. Yep. It's it just was, like it just it's like WD forty for your life. In, in, in extremely generous tip, over fifty percent, I believed it. So Selman, no, we man. fucking make yourself sound like a hero. I, I was saying Selman. <laughs> okay. I was pretending Selman did it, <laughs> right. but he did. If Selman paid for our entire Selman meal. paid for our meal with with gift cards, but I, we we left also the cash I'm a tip. fucking hero. Left the right tip, one hundred percent. We talked to Tammy a little bit, and she confided to us. Hope this doesn't get in your trouble. That she preferred her old job at Bubba Gump's to this. Yeah. And that on football days. It's too crazy. Too wild. And yes, the, puts the wild the guys, in the wild you know, stay at a table for four hours at a time and mm. it really eats into her tipping. And well, so that's be, the thing. Be mindful of that, folks. Uh, yeah. Listeners. People are just camping out there watching an entire ball game. And I understand that. But then that, that table stops being a revenue source for the restaurant and in turn for that individual mm-hmm. server. And that was a problem she was dealing with. Um, so yeah, it, it sounded like a, a stressful place to work, especially on those those NFL Sundays. But I, but I do have to say that, and this is something that I was going to mention in my wrap up, is just that so, so much a part of Buffalo Wings and Buffalo Wild Wings is the fo- is football, is NFL Sunday, is college football, is going there and watching some sort of football game or basketball or It's designed baseball. for sports. It's yeah. designed for sports. There's so many big TVs. They do a great job of no matter where you're looking, you see a TV. Uh, so if I want to go watch a football game, I, I would try to be mindful. I guy saw Birthday Boys was playing on one of the TVs there. <laughs> There was a very there was an empty table was, below a birthday boy's yeah. TV. IFC dedicated corner. <laughs> yeah, there's a 13 inch Magnavox that was. <laughs> um, but, but I mean, like, right? Is it? And I think just buffalo wings in general are 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 kind of conducive to to a football experience, right? Sure. Like a, they're, they're, it's so much of what it is. And you're and, not going out on a wing by saying that. <laughs> Well played. One hundred percent. No, wing beer sports. That's their motto. That's what yes. they're they're going for. So, that's what you get. I felt for her, especially because she almost got she almost got knocked over by a couple of big NFL fans. Um on Sunday. On Sunday. Yeah, you you, you I think what you're gonna this do This was is, an anecdote she was relaying. Yeah, if if you're there for three or four hours watching a game, tip big, order some food throughout and and, and keep it going and, and, and just help your server out. So that's that's what we learned. Mm-hmm. And also we're heroes for our great tip. <laughs> also shout out to uh, Bryce who took over for Tammy at the mm-hmm. she went to her on our break at the on her break at the very tail end of the meal. Um, Two shout outs to people who'll never hear. <laughs> <laughs> Bryce uh Bryce informed us that he also bartends at the nearby Olive Garden. So there's that's, a, a that's little true. Uh, he's doing double shifts at the nearby Burbank chain restaurants, but um he seemed like a good guy. Who knows though? He he could be out trying to kill Selman's wife right now. So. Oh, no, I hope not. <laughs> you know what my honest fear is? Like, what if Bryce stole Tammy's tip? I know. I was a little worried about that, too. Yeah. Make or us like, look like assholes. Or he could, yeah, he could have t- we left it in cash because servers also appreciate cash tips. Sure. Mm-hmm. But there's this, I, part of me wanted to hover. We Let's kinda, not impugn Bryce. Part I think, of me, no. I mean, it's just our own cynical view of human nature. Sure. Bryce, if you I took that tip. See, <laughs> I wanted to see. Just a, I, I didn't want to see. I didn't want Tammy to thank us for the tip, but I wanted to see her be happy. Of course, yeah. When she got it. Yes. And B- Bryce, if you took that, if you think your wings are wild, wait to see me if you fucking ripped her off. I'll fucking destroy <laughs> you. 
He could easily <laughs> kick my ass. He was pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> he was tall, at least. Uh, do you want to? What do you think? Should we? Should we wrap it up? Let's get to our final thoughts. Final thoughts. So, uh, so Selma, you know Selma podcast, and I know that you probably have a lot to say. But uh, for for listeners out there, just to, to uh, what we'll do is we'll go around and we'll uh, give our closing thoughts and then give a rating on a scale of one to five forks. So, Matt, you can start. Well, I was a B Dub's virgin, and now I feel like you know I've been initiated into the fraternity of the Buffalo Wild Wing. I. Uh, the wing, the classic wing portion of the meal. The reason that I wanted to go there was excellent. I thought the service was great. The beer selection was great. Wish there was some more creativity on the side foods. Not a fan of boneless wings, but, you know, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. um, I like the design of the restaurant. I like the little football jerseys that everyone was wearing. The black and gray is a nice color scheme. Mm-hmm. The Burbank one could have been a little cleaner. It seemed a little dirtier and like you know, a little messy, kind of like sloppy in terms of how much was going on there. Uh, I don't know if that fits into my overall review. <laughs> it's kind of a uh, stream of consciousness thing it here. But just as a, as a wing restaurant, if you want wings, I'm going to give it four forks and one time. Wow. That's right. I'm invent I'm reinventing the system here where there's a you can there's thirds called tines. Oh, so you're picturing a three tined fork. A three tined fork. All right. Wow. So Selman, I love that. It's one of my favorite things that's ever happened on this podcast. And Nick probably hates it so much. <laughs> well, do you no, already I'm have in a half stars? Three and a half forks? We've done half. We've done I half think, forks. I like the well, tines. those could be forks with four tines, two two tines. Oh yeah. Okay. Two out of four tines. So you can you can convert that. Okay, so two times you, like you gave it a two time, so you gave it like a quarter. No, you no, gave I, it one time of a three time. One time, I, I gave it one time, four and one time, so four and a third. Four and a third. Okay. Four and a third times. So you have to specify how many times are on your four fork forks. when you give your rating. Yes, that's super unwieldy <laughs> system with two different. <laughs> no. Okay, this is I, well, I have two forks with two tines because they're like for oysters, uh -huh. and then three regular three time forks, and then some big four tiners. <laughs> <laughs> and it's six and seven eighths. <laughs> What's the lowest common denominator? Okay, I'm gonna have to go to thirty thirty ninths here. I don't know. Four and change. Four and change. You can say four and a half if you want. Four and a half. Okay. Great. Oh wait. I, no. You know what? Four and four and a time. Four, four and a time. Four and a time. Four and a time is great. Four and a time. Okay. You I don't want to reinvent the fork system. I kind of do. Now am I, am I gonna chase? I can't. I'm, I just uh, think you got to keep for this. For you going to go to B Dubs, you're thinking about wings. They've got the flavors. They've got what you want. Everything else, it's it's either good or bad. But for what you want, they deliver it. Absolutely true. I I I, ahead, I, I, I was going to try to chase the 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 hand holding club, but I'm not going to. So that will give you a little hint of what I was going to maybe do there. Okay, my wife got home. She wasn't murdered. That's a great. That's great news. Nick, That's your great. wife is good. <laughs> <laughs> and my non-existent wife and girlfriend are great too. Um. I, I, I love buffalo wings. I do. I, I like. I told you, I don't really consider them a full meal. I love to have them with pizza. Buffalo Wild Wings does a great job as far as far as chain restaurants or fast food restaurants go with wings. It's one of the best wings you can get. It's not the best. I like a. I usually like a crispier wing than what I got at Buffalo Wild Wings. But I will say that the dry rubs brought that crispiness out because it, it, they weren't sogged down from the sauces. Um, great service. I was, even the, also, even the freshly sauced wings were not soggy. They were not. They 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 weren't. But I, I even like I, I like I like a kind of a well done wing, like like a yeah. crispy. Mm -hmm. Um, the service was great. Shout out for my black cherry mojito and the the uh, I, I want to say also the that chipotle ranch sauce was good. Even though the the cheese curds and the onion rings were were the stars and everything else was just okay, it, it, but not terrible. But, you know, the star of that place is the wings, and they're good. They're not rubbery like other places, but they're also not the best wings. But they have a lot of great inventive flavors. And for me, so much of it is just – if it is connected to this place and the idea of football and watching football and having fun and eating these wings and just like a, a big, nice game experience. And it was a great experience tonight, too, when there was sports on every – TV in the I mean, place. Do you think if we'd gone and we were actually paying attention to the game, we could have followed it, though? 
I don't even know because might have I don't. Been too chaotic. It might have even. Yeah, I don't even know. They don't play really repeats of sports games, but like uh, unless it's late. It was night all on interview ESPN. shows and sports talk. Yeah. Yes, but but if we'd gone last night. I mean, would they have had the volume on or? I think they would have had the volume on. Yeah, and that would have been insane for a place that was so packed tonight on a Tuesday. I can't even imagine what it would have been like last night. But all that being said, good wings. I'm gonna give it four for. Four forks, no tines. No tines. No tines, but I, I'm giving but it four. But of the four, you have how many tines per fork? Uh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you can mix four. and match, too. Uh, four, there's four on each fork. So 16 tines. 16 times. 16 out of 20 times. 16 out of 20 <laughs> times. stolen Nick system. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Only tines now. No forks. No forks need be discussed. Okay. Sorry. I like uh I like Buffalo Wild Wings. I've gone a decent number of times. My first visit was uh with uh friends of the podcast, Evan Susser and Jack Allison. We saw a, a Clippers game. Uh not on that occasion, but on a later occasion there, and that that's a similar grouping. Uh, I'd say uh, talking about what we were just discussing, a good place to watch a full game of sports because if you can find an angle on one TV, there are enough TVs where you know you can usually find an angle on one that's playing the the game that you want, and they'll often have game audio of whatever the biggest event is. So a pretty good place to to watch sports if you can stake out a spot. The thing is, it's so crowded and it's so high traffic, and I think you have to take that into account in terms of. If you're going to Buffalo Wild Wings specifically for a sporting event, you better get there early, or maybe you're better served going to a sports bar that's a little less low traffic, not quite as highly trafficked, because it is just a madhouse in there, even on a night where there isn't a big sporting event like to- like a- like tonight, where there was really nothing going on. Like if I'd worn my free Brady hat, M shirt and hat combo during a Patriots game, I might have gotten murdered there. Yeah, there's there, a possibility. I, I could see that happening. I, it feels like the kind of place where a scuffle could break out among the Patriots. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think so. Especially if we were they were playing like the Raiders or something, like a team that doesn't yeah. like the Patriots. Yeah. That's popular around here, or like the Chargers or something like that. Yeah, they were. They probably wouldn't like you. Niners, Niners fans were not acquitting themselves well last night. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say that the wings. I agree with the points that are made. It's a wing restaurant, and you know we're using forks as a system at a place where you. We, just, we were using forks. We were using forks as a system. We're using <laughs> utensils at a system where we ate an entire meal with no utensils Great because point. they're all finger foods. How many wet um, naps do we give it? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but, but, I mean, that's the experience. You're getting a bunch of wings. It's going to be messy. Uh, I think the wings are going to deliver. Highly recommend the dry rubs because I just think they are, they're just good and they're, they've just got uh, really nice flavors, all the different ones I've tried. Um, uh, the apps, keep it simple. Stick to the wings. Uh, maybe some fries, which I've had there in the past. And are, and are decent. Uh, okay drinks, but I'd say stick with beers because the cocktails are usually a little over-sugared and for my taste. And they have a huge beer selection, And too. they have a huge beer selection. Uh, follow, follow the motto. Wings, beer, sports, that's what it's all about. You're going to have a good time. Just keep in mind it's going to be pretty crowded. Four forks for me. Wow. Almost a hand-holding club. Very close, but I respect Tynes. But you know where it is. It's right there in the Gold Plate Club. It certainly is. Selman, we got a Gold Plate Club restaurant, uh, which is exciting news. I think Selman is texting to see if his wife is actually alive. No, she's alive. Okay, great. He's I'm texting see, I'm, I'm Nick's saying, wife. I'm looking, to see, <laughs> I'm looking to see if their wings are frozen. I'm sure they're frozen. Just... Oh, that's a great call. Well, as he does that... I, it's 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 a good addition to the Gold Play Club. I, I, I think I, it belongs. I think it belongs too. I, I think that it's a franchise that's growing and growing, and like you said, it's very relevant. Like it's, very it's super relevant. Mm-hmm. It's it's of the of the here and now. It's a it's a very popular place. When I came out here, I didn't even really know it, and I've I've seen it just grow. Like like when I the first commercial I saw for, it, I was like, what is this weird West Coast chain that probably isn't that good and then when i went there i was like pleasantly surprised and i was like oh it's bigger than what i thought it was it just feels joyful yes and exuberant in its embracing of this fun food and i feel like who knows what flavors you might encounter there in the future yes and you know again it's a massive evil corporate chain but as that goes 
you know, that we know that going in, so there's no surprises. I, I will also say that, the, 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 like we said, the service was great, and they brought ranch and blue cheese. We asked for the blue cheese. Both decent, both kind of similar. Yeah. And the, and but the veggies were a little dry, but you know whatever. The, we didn't even mention the carrots and and the celery, celery and carrots. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're whatever. They're th- they're, they're whatever. throwaways. They're they're toss-ins. good to toss in if you need to cool down for a good minute, a good second. But they they were nothing special. They were kind of you know like they never are special. But then yeah. also they were even less special than than normal. I'd say. If you're out there, consider stocking up on some Buffalo Wild Wings gift cards. Their stock is doing well. They're do- yeah, they're doing great. Did wow, we find out if it's frozen is, or not? They are frozen. All right. There's okay. no way they're not frozen. Well, while you guys uh, uh, get to the bottom of that, uh, I'm going to go set up our next segment. I've got a mystery beverage, and Mitch and Matt are going to have to guess what it is. It's the Weiger Challenge. So I'm going to step out of the room and, and get this uh, mystery drink ready, and you guys can uh, can riff for one second. All right, Selma, now I have to ask you, where, as a foodie, where are the best wings you've ever had? What 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 restaurant? Is that tough? You know, it is hard because I feel like when I get wings, it's usually like at a restaurant I'm not that excited about, mm-hmm. you know, but I know I, I'm a big wing fan. Yeah. So that's what I'm – I mean, obviously there's there's the Korean wing, the Kyochan, yes. the triple fry. Oh, Kyochan is – yes. I mean, that's, you know, great. And if you want to be the hero of any potluck or gathering, bring that. Yes. The Korean fried wing. Um, Have you had Yi Rustic rank wings? Yi Rustic wings are – Ranked among the highest for local Los Angeles people. They're, they're, I haven't they're, been there for a long time. Yeah, the, the, the wings are. To, Angelinos love the love the ye rustic wings. Um, yeah, for me, I, I have a couple spots back home, but I don't know. You know, this is a thing we didn't get into because you get into the big East Coast versus West Coast pizza. Th- I mean, not, I'm sorry, not East Coast versus West Coast pizza, but people always say pizza on the West Coast is bad, and that New York and the East Coast has just the best pizza. And I was like, "Oh, what about wings? Where do, where do wings where do wings rank in that? Do the, does the East Coast have better wings, or do the West Coast have better wings?" And uh, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Okay, we, Weiger just handed me. I don't have an a opinion. Clear, I mean, yeah, I've had good wings on both coasts, so that's all. Yeah, I don't know. I would assume there's some regional dominance in the in Buffalo in that upstate New York region or western yeah. New York, wherever Buffalo is actually located. But uh, I, I honestly have no idea. I believe I listened to a food podcast once that, you know, the, the initial premise of the story was which of these two white guys who claim they create, created the buffalo wing created it. But then, of course, it turns yeah. out that the recipe had been stolen from African-American families and oh, uh, appropriated sense. by white people. That sounds like, about right. Like, well, like, we're awful like, once again, yes, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um all right, so I've handed you each uh, your well, cup. Before you, before you say Go that, ahead. sorry, before we get into it, tweet at us where you think the best wings are. I want to hear it. I yeah. would love to and hear it. And also, that. my food Twitter is at Matt Selman Eats. Oh, yes. And, and my regular that. Twitter is at Matt Selman. <laughs> and I should have done an Instagram for the food one, but I didn't. <laughs> and I'm 44. So <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've handed you each a cup of, of liquid. Um, go ahead and describe. You guys don't know what it is. Go ahead and describe for our listeners what you're sensing, what you're smelling and, and tasting. It seems carbonated. Uh, I think it's a carbonated drink. Smells a little like citrusy. Fresca family. Fresca family is a great call. I, I think it's around there. No one's beaten me at the Weiger Challenge, by the way, Selman. So this it's whoever gets closest? Yes, closest or guesses it correctly. Closest without going over. Yeah, Mitch is three and zero in the Weiger Challenge so far. Why didn't we buy B Dub stock just in the, over the in June? It's gone up like <laughs> fifty dollars. It's gone up like twenty five percent. He has been looking at his phone, I believe, at the Buffalo Wild Wings stock. Yeah. Are you using the Stocks app? Yeah. I've never seen anyone use the Stocks app. Maybe you need to hire, hang out with more higher paid writers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. Uh, at midnight writers <laughs> taking selfies. <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a sip. I think it's I, right. I'm I'm guessing it's kind of in the in the squirt family maybe or cactus cool but cactus cooler I believe is orange. So let's. I don't let's drink try soda that. anymore. So I don't know if that's an advantage or a disadvantage. Hmm. Strange. I don't think it's diet. It tastes a little too sugary for me to be diet and be and be fresca. I actually like it. It's refreshing. It uh, is refreshing. It's not overly sweet. It 
almost as people like, love swallowing noises. I know that. <laughs> if you can turn, if you, when you mix this episode, turn those up like that. Oh, that yeah. We've we've gotten multiple complaints, and people have threatened to stop listening. To we've the gotten podcast. yeah from the gulping and ch- it's just inevitable. I mean, the the alternative is we're either cutting time out of this or dead air. You know, I mean, it's just it's I, like it's is it flat? Did you open it a while ago? I will say the container was just opened. The container wow, was open like seconds carbonated. ago. That's why I think it might be something like, I don't think it's this, but you know, like the, the, what are those like Italian lemon drinks or whatever? I, I don't think it's that because those have stronger tastes. Yeah. The ones that have the little They're, foil on top of a. The, yeah, what are those called? Oh, are, 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 they're uh, San Pellegrino. Yes. Those are good. Yes. Um, I mean, it almost tastes like some weird Korean, you know, what, what language is this soda? <laughs> There's no explicit time limit on the Weiger Challenge, but I think we can start getting to your guesses. I'm, uh, I'm going to go with a squirt because cause I don't know what else to – there's a lot of different elements in it, but I, I, I feel like the San Pellegrino will, 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 will push me too far off, and I'm just thinking maybe – I feel like I've already helped you too much. With the Fresca? We're collaborating. I know. I guess that's the nature of it. I'm going squirt. Squirt. I'm not happy with my answer, but I got to give that answer. That is your answer, squirt. Yep. Selman? I feel like I lack the words and experience to properly analyze this, mm-hmm. and that I'm rarely in the soda aisle of any place. But I'm just going to go with my heart, which says strange Korean soda. Strange Korean soda. In a blue can. Strange, it's as specific as saying it's in a blue can. In a right. dark blue can. In a dark blue can. Has the student, me, bested his master, Selman? Mitch, you retain your championship belt. You were dead on. It is squirt. It's wow. literally squirt. Yes. <laughs> wow. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm impressed well with myself. Well played. You know what? I gave a good tip tonight, and I got the soda right. <laughs> what a good guy. <laughs> uh, that's Selman. Why- I'm embarrassed that I knew that. So. <laughs> I may have, never, I may have never had squirt before. <laughs> it's not bad. I'm actually a, I'm a squirt apologist. I think it's pretty good, refreshing, offbeat grapefruit soda. That is nice to have. On so a, it is a great. It is in the grapefruit family. Yeah, it's got like a grapefruit flavoring to it. I've always liked Fresca. I mean, it's a diet soda. And it's got that aspartame flavor, but it's pretty good. Fresca is not bad for a diet soda. I feel mm-hmm. I'm I as I've gotten older, I've liked more of those caffeine-free, carbonated, like mildly flavored drinks, and I feel like squirt is in that sort of like you were saying the fresca family i agree with that um all right that's the weiger challenge just like a restaurant we value your feedback let's open up the feedback mm. today's email comes to us from Lindsay phillips Lindsay writes ahoj ahoy doughboys i'm an expat living in prague and i've noticed that the reputation of american food here is very poor i often hear comments about the low quality and lack of diversity in american chain restaurants which leads people to believe that american food is only Hamburgers and fried items. Places like Cracker Barrel or perhaps Boston Market offer more offer more regional homestyle dishes. I was wondering what chain you would choose to be a representative of the broader spectrum of American food. Thanks, Z Pozdravim, Lindsay Phillips. Hmm, what does that last thing mean? I don't know. Goodbye or something? I just read it. I tried to pronounce it as much as I could. I did some whatever. Your podcast check, sucks. Some check word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um... Uh, what do we think, fellas? And any chain you would say as a representative of American food to a, a perhaps skeptical European audience? Wow. Well, you know what? Th- there's a lot of people hating on some of that stuff. Like, really? Is everyone above like McDonald's? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, sure. McDonald's kind of great, but 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 I mean, sure. Here's the deal. If if it's if we're gonna get into that sort of thing of like, what's a great, great like fast food chain? Like, you gotta go with. You're in and out. You're five guys. You, you got to go with these kind of these kind of these uh, top of the line places that are that are coming out now because because it seems like what they're criticizing the the U.S. fast food chains on is like kind of poor quality meat and 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 just like kind of garbage food. But sure. I I just don't necessarily agree. I I, I don't I disagree with those Europeans and and. Uh, uh, or wherever the hell she's from, uh, that so much of what this podcast is, like we've said, is you're craving that specific thing. We, 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 ra- we're not ranking this as we, it's not on the spectrum of like, oh, you could eat at a five star, one of the re- best restaurants in the world. 
It's for there's a lot of other factors that go yeah, into definitely. it. Right. I mean obviously the question is absurd. Yes. That is if you want representative food of America, whatever region of America you're in, go mm -hmm. find the authentic food in that area that people have been cooking there for a long time. Like yes. you know, so if you're in Charleston, find the the Charleston guys barbecue shack that's been there for 150 years and has no health code and is, you know, dripping with fat and it's the most authentic, you know, rib sandwich you'll ever have. I mean, I agree with that. I, every every time I go to a I mean, city, if you want to hate that's America, I... yeah, try our fast food chains, <laughs> definitely. But then you you know, but you we know what we're doing in talking about this food. I mean, yeah, we could have a parallel podcast called non chain doughboys. Sure, <laughs> that where we just go to like you know weird Korean holes in the wall and awesome taco trucks. Yeah, like which Far are Farley friend? Elliott, our friend. I bought his book, by the way. Oh, that's awesome! I ordered Farley Elliott's book. That's right up your alley. Right up my alley, and so th that's what you should be doing: is eating the local place wherever you are, the same way you would in Czechoslovakia. <laughs> Right, get their like human flesh potato dumplings or whatever they have. <laughs> so I agree with Selman, and and usually when I go to different cities and stuff, I, I try to go to whatever you know uh, restaurant or whatever is recommended. As far as chains go, that's a different story. Like, what do you recommend? Like, I can enjoy Domino's. I've said that before on this podcast. I love Wendy's. Maybe if it had to be a fast food burger place, I'd say try Wendy's. Sure. You can have a good meal from Wendy's if it's if it's the right Wendy's, you know. We've talked about Chipotle on this podcast. That seems like kind of a higher quality place. As far as pizza goes, Domino's, I, I mean, like, what do you choose, Domino's or Pizza Hut? Or, I like, just feel like you're not going to win over a European with, no. with American chain pizza. You're I feel not. Like it's, it's I, I think you stick to I think you stick to burgers, and I also feel like KFC. I feel like you, KFC is very KFC is pretty good. KFC is so location dependent, though. Yeah. Yes. That's true. Um, but yeah, I don't well, you know. Could, you could impress with the KFC. That was in the back of my head too. I would yeah. say if someone's coming over here, I might take them to an In-N-Out Burger, or you know, I mean, because it's, cause it's just because I think that's such a go-to and that's a personal favorite spot. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of American like sit-down chain restaurants, yeah, I think she mentioned it, but maybe like a Cracker Barrel is just like, oh, that's kind okay. of like the pretty good version of the or the the good version of like that sort of American diner concept. Yeah. Um, or American sort of down home country restaurant concept, but yeah, I don't know. I, I I think Selman's right. There's just there's no way to win here. There's just if if you're dealing with a skeptical European audience, yeah, then there's no American chain that's going to make them say like, oh, you know what, this is this is good stuff. You know, maybe Wendy's, maybe Wendy's. <laughs> well, Wendy's is the answer. We that's our <laughs> answer. No, I, I also agree with Wendy's. That's... Yeah, Wendy's is great. Um, Damn, it, I'm trying to find a list of the top chain restaurants. It may be a fun, like guess where the, your guess where where we went is on the list of. Oh, of, that's a great idea. Someone should produce some of this shit. I, am, I, can't, I can't stop with Dustin, of course. Does I can't a great stop job. producing. I'm sorry, Justin. Uh, There's a magazine called National Restaurant News that I highly recommend you guys follow. Oh my god, you get oh, sure. that? Well, Do I don't. You, I don't subscribe to it, but so I don't get all the information. But I, you can, I Twitter follow feed. it on Twitter and. Yeah. I could read about that stuff endlessly about in the new crazy menu items and like, you know, Caesar salad. This is taken over America and you know just just listing the the top. He's always he, a lot see, of this stuff is locked. Someone has always had his uh, his his finger on the pulse of what's going on in the food world. So uh, I t I say we take his advice and follow that. I mean that'd be a fun. You could figure it out ahead of time and make people guess like. Oh, my God. I'd say Buffalo Wild Wings is probably in the top. It's got to be in the top 30 or well, so. Well, if we're talking about revenue and popularity, yeah, it's got to be up there at this point. I mean, it's just got so many locations, and they're they're just doing such great business. Yeah. We'll figure that out. We'll figure out some ways to inject some more professionalism into our podcast, some yeah. more running features. I think that's a great suggestion. <laughs> Should uh, I be pitching this off the air? <laughs> no, this is fantastic. I love it. I, I love where this podcast has got. Um, Buffalo Wild Wings in 2010 was number 26. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So it's got to okay, be so even higher. Top 30. Yeah, wow. Uh, have a decade ago at this point. Um, if you're out there and you have a question or comment about the world of chain restaurants, you can email us at doughboyspodcast at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at doughboyspod. Check out our Facebook fan page, which is just doughboys. Uh, and I, I want to say, I hope we weren't too uh, hard on that, girl. That was a great question. Slakava or whatever. I thought it was a great question, Lindsay. I thought, I, yeah, I thought you, the Lindsay. question was great. I think it's just a difficult one to well, answer, I just feel bad it's not for a problem her. with the question. I feel bad for her because 
if she were to come to America, the internet doesn't exist and you couldn't type in three words that would let you know fantastic food to have in any city that would blow your mind and is so much better than anything you've ever had in the entire Eastern Bloc for your entire life. There's no five word search that you could type in on any machine that anyone owns that would direct you to unbelievable food. Also, not prepared in horrible, unhealthy post Soviet slaughterhouses. Oh my God. Well, best of luck, Lindsay. <laughs> Good By luck the way, out there. I, wait, can I, can I, uh, another foodie shout out thing? Of course. Yes. I saw a great food related documentary and not depressing. It makes you want to kill yourself like Food Inc. Um, uh, called um, Searching for General So. Okay. On Netflix. Oh, okay. You may have scanned past it and said, what was that? It's just about the history of General So's chicken. Oh, sort of that's an, an emblematic kind of Americanized Chinese dish. Yes. And it tells the history of kind of, of, of Chinese food in America and the Chinese immigrant experience in America and all those crazy old school, you know, one per town giant Chinese restaurants that seem to exist all over America. And it all the way up through P.F. Chang's and, you know, fancy Chinese restaurants. And so if you're obsessed with, like, Americanized Chinese food like I am, this this quest for the origin of this one dish uh, is quite an entertaining and fun, non-suicide-provoking documentary, <laughs> unlike most documentaries. I gotta check that out. And Chef's Table, I heard, is good, too. That's yeah. The, yeah. That's cool. Good. So searching for General So. Awesome. Awesome. Other than that documentary, uh, Matt, is there anything else you'd like to plug? I know you mentioned your, your Twitter yeah, handle my earlier. Twitter handle, at Matt Selman Eats, my <laughs> regular Twitter handle, at Matt Selman. Uh, oh, okay. Um, I know we got you can edit. This is all boring. Just edit it all out. But, no. you know, I do sort of specialize on the Simpsons and food episodes. And um, so I did a, a show about the foodie phenomenon a couple of years ago that I thought was good with him and Eric were in it and it was about the family becoming foodies and Homer's like, what the hell is this crap? What are you doing? So then I'll find that on the Simpsons world.com. And then oh, yeah. I have another food episode that's going to air in, in October, early October called Q detective about there a mystery set in Springfield's barbecue underworld that I'm very excited about. And that's great title food motivated. You yeah, sometimes you start with the title and <laughs> write the episode around it. That's a good I plan. And then, you know, a lot of the episodes I pour my love into have a lot of, uh, by default, just to food references. And I love including chain restaurants and chain, fake chain restaurants and fake chain restaurant entrees and Simpsons episodes that I we did one. There's a restaurant called Scobo's that we invented. That's kind of our... Like the, the Denny's that's not in your town that you never heard of. So like you're used to going to Denny's and you go to a new town and they have a, you know, what is this place? Scobos, but it's their, it's their Denny's. Gotcha. <laughs> and they had a line of, I don't know, I'm just talking about jokes I like. <laughs> Scobos signature skippers. No, excuse me. Scobos signature sippers that were their d massive menu of unbelievably disgusting fruity novelty drinks. If you told me Scobos existed and Scobo signature sippers existed, I would believe it. Eminently <laughs> plausible. <laughs> Sounds totally believable. It was like butterscotch and gin and oh, eggs Benedict teenies and stuff. I, mean, you know, I love that. I can write that stuff all day. It's my favorite <laughs> fake chain food is like <laughs> my favorite thing at work and people have to like slap me to stop me from doing it <laughs> well truly one of the first foodies and a pleasure to have you on here anyway well, thank you guys for having friend. me this is thank like a you. dream come true oh uh, a real treat uh, uh well thank you so much and uh uh for the spoon man mike mitchell i'm nick weiger until next time happy eating see ya